Good morning, Martin Street. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's men's day, and it's worship time. The psalmist declared in Psalm 150, Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord, that everything that hath breath, praise ye the Lord. Yes, Lord. Will you please stand and join me in our opening prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the joy of being able to wake up this morning and the privilege of being able to assemble in your house of prayer just one more time. Lord, I want to thank you for each person that is here under the sound of my voice. And I want to thank you for those that may be watching online. Lord, we humbly ask that you bless this time of worship. And we especially ask that you bless the men of Martin Street Baptist Church and bless this Men's Day celebration. Lord, we now place this time of worship in your hands and we pray that your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Will you please continue to stand if you are able and sing along with our male chorus and lead us in our opening selection. Around, we come this far. Oh, 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 oh,
I thought number one would surely be me. I thought I could do all I wanted to do. I thought of myself as a mighty big man, but I can't leave well, well, without you holding my hand. I thought number one would surely be me. I thought I could be all I wanted to be. I thought of myself as a mighty big man, but I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. You know the mountain too high and the valley is much too wild. Lord, down on my knees, you know that I, I've learned to stand, but I can't even walk without you holding my hand. I thought I could do a lot on my own I thought I could make it in this world all alone I thought I could build all I sink and stand but I can walk without you holding my hand. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. You know the mountain is too high and the valley is much too wide. Lord, down on my knees, you know that I, I've learned to stand, but I can't even without you holding my hand. Since I made Jesus my all and all from now on when i'm in trouble only his name i call and if i don't trust in him i be less than a man but i can't even well, well, without you holding my hand, Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my. Well, you know the mountain is too high and the valley. 
is much too wide. Lord, down on my knees, you know that I, I learned to stand, but I can't even walk without you. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my You know the mountain too high and the valley is much too wide. Lord, down on my well, well, you know that I I learned to stand, but I can't even walk without you holding my Let's hear it once again for the world renowned. Well, well, I take that back. We're, we're at least known in Fuquay. Good morning. If you don't know me, I am Brother Eric Curry. And I can tell you, for many of you know, uh, my background and Anytime you see me on TV, it's probably for some, some kind of crime. I didn't commit it. But you know, when I stand behind a mic for the Lord, that's the greatest gift I could, I could give. So thank God for waking up this morning and Amen. praise God. Amen. On behalf of our pastor and a good frat brother, Dr. Sean J. Singleton, and the Layman's League of Martin Street, I'd like to welcome you to our 2022 Men's Day Worship Celebration in person. And I'd like to take a special moment to recognize a young man that asked me to take part in today's Men's Day festivities, Deacon David Brown, Chair of the Layman's League. Can you please stand? Uh, there we go. You can't, can't trust an alpha man anytime. All right. I'd also like to thank you for joining us today because this is the day the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it every day. So wherever you are and however you're joining us today, we're just thankful you decided to join with us. It is a joy and privilege to have you with us, and we pray that something is said or done today that draws you a little bit closer to Jesus. So at this time, we'd like to recognize any visitors that we have worshiping with us today. If you are a visitor with us, will you please stand so we can show you some extra love? There we go. Welcome again. We thank you for joining us today, and if you're watching online and you're visiting us uh, virtually, we also send you a big shout out as well. Come on, church, let's put our hands together again and let's thank God for our visitors. So this is, this is the fun part. It is Men's Day, and we know this, so will all the men please stand so we can celebrate you today. You, you look good. There you go. Why don't you turn around so they can see you? Turn around so they can see them pretty bow ties. And, and I can say, um, except for Brother Pastor and I, uh, you all look good too. 
Uh, but but we, we, we're the cutest uh, today. All right, here we go. Can, can, we, can we give a, a, a shout out again to the brothers in Bo? Come on, let's go. All right, now I'd like to share with you some weekly announcements. We start by asking that you please pray for the sick and shut in. The word says, the prayers of the righteous do availeth much. So let us remember our sick and shut in in our prayers. And uh, if you have an opportunity, please reach out uh, to those that you know uh, far and wide. The church conference, I'd like to remind you that we will have our quarterly church conference this Wednesday, April the 27th at 7 uh, p.m. All ministries uh, desiring to be on the agenda are asked to please send a representative to the church council meeting tomorrow night, April the 25th, beginning at 7 p.m. Please remember to check your emails for information uh, on the meeting. Mother's Day. Uh, this is very important, so please take note. The Ladies Auxiliary, Auxiliary will host a celebration of Mother's Event on Saturday, May the 7th, in the Family Life Center from 11 until 1 p.m. A reservation is required. Again, a reservation is required. RSVP forms are located on the tables in the rear, so please register before you leave today. And a personal note, uh, if you fail to register and you show up at the door and you are turned away simply because there are not enough meals, I will be selling chitlin dinners in the parking lot for $5. Early voting. We want to remind everyone that early voting in North Carolina runs from April the 28th, which is this Thursday through May 14th. Please take advantage of the early voting opportunities and make sure to exercise your God-given right to vote. Remember, local elections have just as much impact on our lives as national ones, so let's get out and vote. And Martin Street is always good at getting out the vote. Martin Street uh, Baptist Church will be having a church workshop on Saturday, May the 21st at 10 a.m. The workshop will be facilitated by Dr. Anthony Barr, Executive Secretary the General Baptist State Convention of North Carolina. All members are being asked to save the date and make plans to attend. More information will be forthcoming. And lastly, we'd like to thank everyone for their kind and gracious donations to Martin Street. Just know that every seed that has been planted has been planted into good ground, and in due season, you will reap a good reward. For those that are here in person, please feel free to place your donations in one of the offering boxes located near the exit doors, and you can do that anytime during the service. For those that are watching online, there are multiple ways you can contribute by mailing contributions to the church at 1001 East Martin Street, Raleigh, North Carolina, 27601. Dropping off contributions at the drop box located outside this Family Life Center through the Cash App application at dollar sign MSBC offering and at the church's website, martinstreetbaptist.org forward slash donations. We close by reminding our members to, be, to please be on the lookout for the Monday email blast with more information of activities here at the church. And remember, wherever you are in Raleigh, all roads lead to Martin Street, where now we're going to invite uh, someone that's uh, very close to, to my heart, He's a mentor, he goes by many titles, doctor, commissioner, deacon, I just call him a good brother. Deacon James West to come and lead us in morning scripture. Good morning, Martin Street. Um, I was just reflecting uh, in terms of um, everyone, every man is wearing a tie except myself. And I will credit that to my head and not to my heart. It's been kind of a challenging, busy week. But the main thing, we are in the house of the Lord. And if we ever needed the Lord in him, in our lives, we truly need the Lord now. So I will begin by sharing a scripture that is dear to my heart, and it comes from um, John uh, 12 through 14, 
the New King James Version. Uh, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life to his friend. You are my friend. If you do whatever I command, you will be blessed. Now would you please join me for a word of prayer. O oh Lord, our most high yes. and sovereign God of heaven and earth, Dear God, we come this morning proclaiming your greatness and your calling and the glory of your grace, dear God. The glory of the Lord is ever present. The heavens even declare the glory of the Lord and the whole earth is full of his glory. We know the earth is the Lord's and all of its fullness, and we come this morning, dear Heavenly Father, to help you to open up our eyes so that we will see the wonders of your greatness and your world. Open up our eyes, O oh Lord, that we may see the power and the glory of the Lord in our time of need. God, will there be trouble? Yes, there will be trouble, and there will be trials, and there will be tribulations, but you have said to be of good cheer, but you, you've also said you are there for every waiting person in need and every troubling heart, and there's trouble all over in this world, but we thank you, dear God, for your eternal greatness the glory of your presence. So just be with Martin Street and be with our country in a time of strife, need, and war. We thank you, dear God, for your many great and precious promises. For we know that with you, without you, uh, and Jesus, that we can do nothing. With you and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, there's nothing impossible. We thank you for your assurance and for your great and pre precious promise that you would supply all of our needs according to our rich and glory. And we, dear God, know that that does not always come when we want it because you're sovereign and you're in charge and you know our needs and you will meet those needs. I truly believe that the greatest manifestation of your glory is in the person of your son Jesus Christ. We just uh, celebrated uh, Easter and the resurrection and all of that should be close to our heart. For the word says we, we have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord and we know that the Lord is there. He sent his son and the tree true glory of our life is in Jesus our Savior that came to know our needs and experience our needs. So just keep us in harmony and keep us in fellowship with one another and as John said please keep us to God to love each other no matter how difficult that is. Thank you God for your new covenant the covenant of love, because you truly said that we should love you, we should love our neighbors as you have loved us. This prayer, I pray in Jesus' name for God to be the glory. Amen.
Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. It is my esteemed honor and privilege to introduce our guest preacher for the morning, and he is none other than Reverend Joseph Stevenson. Reverend Stevenson was born in Kansas City, Missouri, and considers himself to be a product of Detroit, Michigan. He was ordained in March 2014 at Macedonia New Life Church in Raleigh, North Carolina, where his father, Doc, Reverend Dr. Joe L. Stevenson, is the pastor. Reverend Stevenson, having served in ministry since he was a young man, was eventually assigned as youth pastor at Mount Vernon Baptist Church in Durham, North Carolina. He has an inherent passion for the Word of God and seeing it manifest throughout all disciplines. In 2013, Reverend Stevenson authored the book, Unplugged, 30 Days Without Technology, within which he catalogs his journey of 30 days without the internet and social media and explores how it brought him closer to God. He also challenges the body of Christ to pursue intimacy with God by silencing their devices and getting quieter with God. Reverend Stevenson has established and founded numerous podcasts which have obtained an international leadership where he passionately preaches the word of God in a contemporary yet challenging way. Reverend Stevenson continues to assist his father in ministry at Macedonia New Life Church. Reverend Stevenson married his wife, Dana Stevenson, in March 2012, and they recently celebrated their 10th anniversary. He is the father of two children, London and Joey. His bio included the quote, my passion in ministry is no longer in the activity of simply doing church, but is in the action of living it. I want to see the body of Christ build beyond the walls and shine like a city on a hill. After another selection from our male chorus, the next voice you will hear will be that of Reverend Joseph Stevenson. Pray with him and pray for him as he brings the word of God. Thank you. quit blowing if the gray clouds always cover the sky if the billows keep rolling and it rains all the time now if the moon decided not to shine tonight the stars, stars won't give a twilight, Lord, you gave me, yes, you gave me one more sunny day, yes, if the wind never quit blowing, if the gray clouds always cover the sky. If the billows just keeps on rolling And it rains all the time Now if the moon decided not to shine tonight And the stars, stars won't give a twilight Lord, you gave me Oh, 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 oh. And they 
To God be the glory for the things that he has done. He woke me up this morning. I didn't vote on that. I woke up with breath in my lungs. I didn't vote on that. My family was still healthy. I didn't have a say in that. We made it through COVID. We didn't have a vote on that. I've heard my grandmother and I heard my grandparents and I heard my dad say it this way, if it had not been for the grace of God, if it had not been for the love and the moving hand of God, I don't know where I would be. So I'm just a little bit grateful this morning. I'm thankful. Uh, Martin Street, y'all are not a stranger to me. I don't know if this face looks familiar, but we're family. We've been together for years. So y'all might go back, go look through some old tapes. You'll see me. I have white makeup on, but you'll see me. <laughs> but I'm grateful to God for this opportunity this morning to stand with you and to be here and to deliver the word of God. I see some, some, some familiar faces, but um, I'm thankful this morning. Pastor, thank you so much for uh, allowing me to be here, and I'm grateful uh, then for this opportunity. Thankful for, to my father, my pastor, Dr. Joe L. Stevenson, who's right up the hill, Macedonia New Life Church. Um, where we do the same, we share the same mission, the same values, and that is to preach Christ, that is to spread this gospel to all of the, the lost souls and to everyone in this world so that we might see him go home. Amen? Did you hear what I said? So that we might go home. How many of you know this morning that this world is not your home? I, I said, how many of you understand this morning that this world is not your home? I know we try to make it more comfortable, but that's all you can do is make it more comfortable because you don't belong here. Did you get that? You don't belong here. Eventually, you're going to have to go home where all those dreams of a perfect place will manifest. But I'm thankful for the opportunity to stand here and to, 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 to be here. And again, thankful to my father. I got to go home with this lady today, so I dared not acknowledge her. I was messing with her, with her this morning, and I said, uh, I said, hey, you think I can acknowledge you today? She said, yeah, that's, that's fine. But my wife, my beautiful wife of, uh, what, 10 years now? We just celebrated 10 years, baby. <laughs> can you stand for me? My wife, Dana Stevenson. <laughs> who is my pillar. She is my support. And I tell her all the time that she's a genius. She doesn't know it. She doesn't think she is, but she is, I mean, what they say, behind every good man or beside every good man is a even, a, an even better woman or a strong woman. It's absolutely true. That woman right there is my support. So thank you, baby. Thank you. 
My two beautiful kids who are here with me as well, thank God for them. Officers, members, friends, family, thank you again for this opportunity. Musicians, get choir, great job this morning. Y'all did good. Y'all did good. So pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord God. We thank you for this, this, this day, this beautiful day that you have blessed and that you have anointed, Lord God, and that you have prepared and created for us to do your will. Father, I ask that you would speak this morning. I have no business being here, but you sent me for some reason. I don't have anything to say, Lord God, but I know you do. I don't have anything to speak, Lord God, but I know you do. So God, I ask that you would sit me down, make me be quiet so that your word would go forth, so that the people can hear whatever it is that you need to say to them, Lord God. Open the hearts of your people. Open the minds of your people. Open the spirits of your people, Lord God, so that your word can go forth. Open the spirits of those who are seeking you, Lord God, so that your word can go forth and so that they can hear what it is that you have to say and that, Lord, some, that some might be saved today. We don't have any other reason for being here but preaching your gospel so that others can be saved, Lord God, so that we might find you and hear from you. Father, speak. Open our hearts today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I'm excited this morning. The, the, the word of God in the book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 35. It says, Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, it, it, yes, whatever the order of the house is. If it's to stand, I do ask that you would stand. If not, then that's fine as well. But then the, the, uh, Mark 10, 35. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him, teacher, say, teacher, they said, what do you want for us to do? Whatever we, what, 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 what do you want to do for us? Whatever, would you, uh, excuse me, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you, he asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other on your left in glory. Jesus says, you don't know what you're asking, Jesus said. <laughs> I like that, I'm going to say that again. You don't know what you're asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am, being I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I'm baptized with. But to sit at my right or my left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, you know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. And the, to give his life as a ransom for many. I just want to talk for a few minutes this one thought, the cost to be the boss. If you feel comfortable with it, look at your neighbor and say, the cost to be the boss. If you don't feel comfortable with it, text somebody and say, there's a cost to being the boss. If you don't feel comfortable with that, comfortable with that just post it on your Facebook timeline. There's a cost to being the boss. And if you're not comfortable with that, just tweet it real quick. And if you're okay with that, just go ahead and pull up your camera, make a quick video, put it on TikTok. I don't know, I'm just playing. Don't do that. That would be weird. <laughs> There's a cost to being the boss. There's a cost to being the boss. But here we go again, right? Here we go again. 2022, and here we go again. Um, what is it? Almost two years into a new administration, and here we are again beginning to see the signs everywhere and the ads and the promotions and beginning to see flags and beginning to see yard signs on street corners imploring and, 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 and inspiring and motivating and encouraging each of us to, to get up and get out and go vote. Here we are, getting ready to do this again. We're seeing people getting, wearing the t-shirts for their sp specific preferred party beginning to wear t-shirts and hats and beginning to assume their regular political posts, expressing how important and how vital it is and how important it is that you get out and vote so that, so that your, your candidate 
can be and can assume the specific seat of power. The seat of power. And that's the narrative that we're hearing on a daily basis now, that we're beginning to hear as you turn on your television, as you begin to, to open up your phone and you get on the timeline, you get on your Facebook, you're beginning to see the narrative of the change of power is approaching us. The time for a change of the seat of power is beginning to approach us. That is the beginning of the, the narrative that we're beginning to see. This seat of power is changing. But let's talk about this seat of power. The seat of power. It's one of the most seductive, one of the most enticing and, and, and coveted and precious things that a man can desire, can obtain. The seat of power, this, this position, it's one of the things that in the right hands, it can be extremely powerful. The seat of power. In the correct hands, it can be extremely powerful. In the right hands, in the correct hands, it can feed millions. In the correct hands, the seat of power can feed millions. In the right hands, the seat of power can build highways from California to New York. In the right hands, the seat of power can build highways and feed people from Florida all the way up to Canada. In the correct hands. The seat of power can create millions of jobs, build infrastructure that you could only imagine in the correct hands. The seat of power can build infrastructure and connect nations around the world in the right hands. It can build school systems and it can create, create relationships with people that you never thought about in the right hands. But in the wrong hands. But in the wrong hands. It doesn't feed mouths. It creates mouths to feed. The seat of power in the wrong hands doesn't build infrastructure. It destroys it. Leaves it dilapidated and torn down. In the wrong hands, the seat of power in the wrong hands feeds and empowers the corrupt. In the wrong hands, the seat of power only serves to display how vital and how important it is to get them out of that seat of power. Am I here? Are you here with me? I'm, am I talking about your current politicians? No, don't get scared. I'm not going to do that, especially in somebody else's pulpit. But what I am talking about is this concept, this construct, this thing that we all, that even, even the devil himself struggled with, which is this concept of assuming power. Jesus says, I saw him fall like lightning. It says he wanted to exalt himself above God, the throne of God. This concept of assuming more and more power. So here we are as men struggling with the very same thing, or even the more so because we're only men. This, this seat of power, the, and this, it's, it's some powerful stuff, ain't it? This stuff called power. This construct, this thing called power. This, this passage, why do, where am I going? This passage that I read to you this morning, it, it talks to us about two men. James and John, they got a question for Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, I want to sit at your left hand, and I want to sit at your right hand. Jesus, can we sit at your left hand? Can we sit at your right hand? Jesus, all right, well, hey, let's slow down. <laughs> and though it seems like it might be an innocent question, because, I mean, look at, we're looking back 2,000 or so years. Though it seems like it might be an innocent question, it's important to us to look at it through the correct lens. It might be an innocent question, but I can't help but notice when I look at it that, guess what? The others got mad. <laughs> Scripture says they grew indignant. That's a big word. They grew indignant. When they, said, when, when they heard the question, they grew indignant. Because, see, looking at this perspective through our theme, men walking humbly with God, it's clear. It's very clear to see that this is an example of men not walking, not walking humbly and not so humbly with Jesus. But this is an example of men walking a little bit arrogantly. Imagine walking with Jesus on a daily basis and then going up to him and having the intestinal fortitude, having the courage and the gall to say, God, can, Jesus, can I sit at your right hand in glory? Having the courage and the guts to say, can I sit at your left hand in glory? That's some courage right there, guys. Uh, Joe, it's not that bad. Have you ever wondered why they were upset? Have you ever asked yourself why were they mad? Have you ever asked yourself, wonder why they're really mad at this question? Maybe it's arrogance. Maybe it's, it's a lack of humility. Maybe. Joe, come on now. 
uh, man, really, you think so? See, listen, today we live, we live in a world where everybody wants power. Amen? No, you don't want power? Okay. You're different. You go different. And you, you don't want, like, everybody wants a little modicum, a little bit of power. Everybody wants a little bit. It seems like everybody is vying for title. Everybody is vying for position. Everybody is vying for a little bit more power. They want that. Everybody wants their chance, their opportunity to be the boss. I want to be in charge for just a few minutes. Give me an hour. Give me a week. Give me a day. Give me a month of just being the boss. I can do it better than she can. Everybody wants a little bit of power, and it seems like we live in a world where men are fervently seeking positions and titles. Oh, come on, somebody. We see men and women calling and asking the same questions of Jesus. Can I sit at your right hand? Can I sit at your left hand? Calling and, and, and can I sit at your left hand in glory? And even globally, you see the same phenomenon. Even globally, and you hear about it on the news on a daily basis, we see it every day, international sovereign players vying for power. Think of Iran. Think of, think of, think of Europe. Think of Saudi Arabia. Think of uh, Pakistan, then North Korea and South Korea. Think of the United States. All of these sovereign powers vying for global power. Everybody wants a little bit of power. And I told you, here we are approaching midterms. So even as a disciple, even as a disciple of God, to hear those who walk with you, to hear those, even those you're, you're walking with Jesus on a daily basis, and then all of a sudden you hear your brothers, you hear the people who you walk closest with ask a question, something like, can I sit with you oh, next to your throne with you? Bro, we're supposed to be better than that. Did you hear what he just said? Yeah, I heard that, man. We're supposed to be better than that. And they asked him, can they sit with him in glory? Well, what about me? Why he think he can ask him this question? How do they position their mouths to speak something like that? You at your work, you just got the job. Or you, you got your work and then they hire somebody else. They've been there two weeks and then all of a sudden they want to be promoted to be your boss. <laughs> Who do you think he is? You, you just got here, whatever happened to waiting your turn. How you going to get here and think that you can get promoted to be my boss? You got to, what happened to paying your dues? What happened to paying your, pay, paying your time and waiting your turn, earning your place, earning your keep? You don't get to be my boss, the God. You the drama, as my wife says. What happened to earning your keep? It's just something about it. Just something, 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 someone ob oblately just, just missed the cue for humility. Just did you miss the cue for humility? And I know, I know you think I'm exaggerating. Let me help you here. Let me bring you back. Let me bring you back. Let me bring you back. Joe, was it that bad? It was weird. It was bad. It was, they shouldn't ask this question. Guys, guys, come with me. It's important to understand here that the phrase at your right hand, say that with me, at your right hand and at your left hand. In the scripture, when they ask Jesus, can we sit at your right hand? Let me hear you. At your right hand, at your left hand. When they ask Jesus, can we sit at your right hand and at your left hand, the colloquial interpretation of that phrase, in your glory, say in your glory, in your glory. when we hear this today, we immediately think that they must be talking about heaven, right? We immediately think that they must be talking about when we get to heaven. Can we sit with you in your glory? That's not what it means. That's not what it means. If you take a look at the actual word here, that it's just a Greek word, doxa, which means to be interpreted in your, uh, in, as honor, praise, and worship. Honor, praise, and worship. That, taking it further, according to the Younger's Dictionary, the phrase at your right hand and at your left hand in that day could be used figuratively and were known to be at, known as revered places of authority for kings and rulers. Do you understand the question now? In other words, they weren't asking when we get to heaven. What they were really asking is, in other words, they were saying, can we sit in the same authority as you, receiving the same worship and praise as you? Why do you think he said that's not for me to give? Why do you think he said that's not mine to give you? I can't tell you that you can have that. They were saying, Jesus, can we sit? And the same authority, receiving the same praise and honor as you. The answer, and, the, and now you understand why the disciples got mad. You don't deserve that seat. 
Who do you think you are thinking that you can sit next to Jesus? Who do you think that you are that you think you can lord it over me? Jesus says, it was, it's not like the rest of the world where you can lord it over your brothers and sisters. We don't operate like that. We don't move like that. We don't flow like that. It's not about power. So as they say, can I, can I be the boss? Can I be the boss? Jesus, let me be in charge too. Can I be in charge? I say it in regards to leadership. It takes a certain caliber of a person to be able to lead people in the right way. Am I talking? It takes a certain caliber of person to be able to lead people in the right way. It takes a pure heart. It takes a pure heart and someone with an ear to hear God. It takes them a man after God's own heart, so someone to, to, to hear somebody and someone to hear from God, somebody who has truly proven themselves and, and, and attempted to, 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 to be close to God and to be close to his heart. But, 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 but it takes someone who, who, who has truly proven themselves at least a little bit. But when you haven't shown any humility, when you haven't shown any humility and when you haven't shown any, 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 any sacrifice or anything, it's a bit frustrating. It makes you a little bit mad. You haven't displayed any humility, and you're asking to be the, mo- the boss. Whatever happened to walking humbly with God? Whatever wa- happened to walking humbly to God? Instead, you want to jump straight to put me in charge. Just joined the church two weeks ago, and now they want to be in charge of something. The wife told me, you can't do that, Joe. I said, I'm sorry, babe. I wasn't trying. I wasn't trying. You get, you get on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever your thing is, and all of a sudden, you're bombarding with people trying and fighting for influence and power over you. You get online and you see all of us, you turn your TV on and all of a sudden you're fighting, fighting and you see people fighting and, vying and fighting for influence over your thought process. People coming in and going, vying and fighting for influence over what you do with the polls. Vying and fighting for influence and power over you. There is a cost to being the boss. While the gap between the rich and the poor is widening, put me in charge. The middle class is beginning to, 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 to is more so than beginning, the middle class is disappearing. And all I hear is, put me in charge. Education systems are struggling. Put me in charge. Teachers here are drastically underpaid. My, I know my mother's one. Put me in charge. I just want to be the boss. While inflation is at its highest in 40 years, I just want to be the boss. So I get it. As we as men, and as men and women of God, I get it. I understand why the disciples were irritated with this question. I understand why the disciples were so angry with this question. Because in order for you to be even begin to want to be the boss of anything, it requires three things, which they had not shown. It requires sacrifice, sacrifice, it requires service, and it requires suffering. Somebody say sacrifice, service and suffering. And if you ain't willing to pay the price to be the boss, to pay the cost, then you ain't ready. You ain't got no business asking. So being the man, being the boss, walking humbly with God requires sacrifice, service, and suffering. So which, 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 is, which, is, which, which way I want to go here first? I want to start here with sacrifice. If you want to start, if you want to be the boss, you need to first understand sacrifice. The cost of being the boss means sacrifice. If you want to be the boss, you got to understand that cost, which is sacrifice. It means Willie being willing to sacrifice. In the book, there's a book called uh, The Cost of Discipleship by Dietrich Bonhoeffer. If you never read that, it's a good book. Hard to read, but it's a good book. It challenges readers. It challenges the reader to understand that there is a steep, extremely steep cost to being a disciple of Christ, to being a true disciple of Christ. He uses the story of Peter's calling in the book of The Cost of Discipleship the, the call and says that the call to follow Christ is one that cuts off any disciple from his old existence. It cuts off any disciple from his old existence. The call to follow Christ is one that cuts you off from your old existence. In other words, the call to follow Christ is one of sacrifice. It means you won't be able to hang out with all the old people you used to hang out with. It means you won't be able to do the things that you used to do. If you expect to be in charge or an influential in, or a leadership in any way, it means that you have to sacrifice some things. 
It means that you can't talk the way you used to talk, dress the way you used to dress, act the way you used to act. You got to sacrifice some things, sacrifice some old relationships, sacrifice some old friendships. The cost of being the boss, the price you got to pay is one of sacrifice. Say sacrifice. sacrifice. Doesn't mean driving the nicest cars. I'm sorry. It doesn't mean having the finest of things. I'm sorry. And this ministry, the boss is a, is a servant. I'm sorry. The boss means giving of yourself so that others can have. It means taking less so that others can have more. In this ministry, the boss means sacrifice. That's how the little boy, you know the little dude, when they were all out there, all 5,000 of them? That's how he got his little, his little, his little. That's why he got his name in the book, because he was willing to sacrifice. He said, but I only got two fish, and I got five loaves. But if you can work with that, then you can have it sacrifice. Somebody say sacrifice. If you can work with that, then you can have it. The, 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 and this is how the two live fish, and, and he's willing to sacrifice his five loaves of bread. This is how Moses learned. Going back to Egypt, you think he really just wanted to? Like he was just sitting there in the desert saying, oh man, I cannot wait to go back to Egypt, man. It's going to be great. Nah, he had to sacrifice and giving up his place of comfort so that he can go and do what God called him to do. Sacrifice. Second, it means service. Somebody say service. In the same passage, in the same passage, we see Jesus, and he mentions that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. It mean, he said that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, but with you it not, will not be so. Do you know what that phrase lord it over means? The phrase lord it over is a way of describing someone's behavioral tendency to act as if they are more important than someone else. Let me just say that again. The phrase lord it over them mean, is describing some, an individual's behavioral tendency to act as if they are more important than someone else or that they have that right to tell that other person what to do. I'm not saying you, I mean, I'm just going to say put that right there. So many people <laughs> in the body of Christ today are pressing and for titles and positions because out of a sense of ego, we just want to lord it over somebody. We just want to be in charge. We just want to be the boss. We just want to be deacon. We just want to be do doctor. We just want to be bishop. We just want to be trustee. Titles and titles and titles. Running for election because you want to be, be, be known as the governor. Running for election because you want to be the governor, the mayor, the president. Running not because you want to serve, but because you want a title. I grew up as a PK. It, I was born with a title. It's weird. You don't ask for one, but you get it. And you live in the title. And you make choices, and everything that you do, even as a PK, is underneath the title of that's the pastor's son. And you operate within that context and that reality. And you move within that reality. But people never learn who you are as an individual. They never learn who you are as a person. They learn who you are as the title. So then when you grow up and you become a man or you become a woman, people begin to see you as a person. And what happens? They end up surprised when you are genuinely an individual of service. And they say, wow. Oh, we did good. Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, you did. But so many people in the body today, they press for titles and positions, even in the world, doing everything that they can to gain some degree of relevance and some degree of significance, some degree of authority. And I just encourage you all today who are here today to remember that it is not your title. Say that with me. It's not your title. Listen, it is not your title that makes you the boss. It's not your title that makes you the boss. It's not your, 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 your name tag don't mean, I used to run a store. The name tag don't mean nothing because underneath that, once you take the name tag off, guess what? You just who you are. It's not your title that makes you the boss. You know what makes you the boss? Don't, some of y'all are not going to like to hear this. You know what really makes you in charge? It's your ability to serve. I'm sorry to say. I'm not, though, because this is the truth. But it's your ability to serve. It's your service. It's crazy because you can have the title all day, but people are going to call on the person who is willing and always willing to help. There's, there's, they're going to always call on the person who is willing and always willing to serve. Oh, uh, yeah, I know that, I know that he's going to be there, but if you ask Brother John, he will, he will get it done. 
if you ask Brother John, he'll, do, he'll, he'll paint the walls, he'll clean the carpet, he'll cook the food. He'll, if, he can't, if he can't do it, he'll get somebody to do it because he's willing to serve. He's willing to sacrifice. It's not your title. And I encourage you, like I said, just remember, the cost of being the boss is your ability to serve, your ability to sacrifice. Jesus washed the feet of the disciples. Somebody say service. Amen. Noah built an ark. Somebody say service. service. Paul established churches, teachers, and believers. Somebody say service. Jesus healed and taught. Somebody say service. Adopt an attitude of service. Men, women, we have to adopt an attitude of service. How can we serve our communities? How can we serve? Because it starts here. It starts in the body. It starts in the church. It starts, if you want to see a better world out there, we have to start here. How can we adopt an attitude of service so that we can make the world a better place? The last thing I need you to understand, and I'm going to go home on this note. In order for you to be the boss of anything, to be, to be in charge or to be a leader in the community, to be a leader as a man, to walk humbly with God, because see, walking humbly with God does not mean saying, I'm just going to be in charge. It means adopting an attitude of service and sacrifice. Being humbly willing, humble enough to, to serve, humble enough to, sac to sacrifice. And lastly, it means being humble enough to suffer. Oh, I don't like that part either, but it's what we got to do. It means being humble enough to suffer. Humble enough to suffer. I don't want to do the suffering part, Jesus. I know. But it hurt. it's what you got to do. Being humble enough to suffer. I remember the movie Men in Black when Will Smith said, I make this look good. The difference between me and you, I make this look good. Meanwhile, his partner looks at him and he says, yeah, but you got a lot to learn, kid. You got a lot to learn, kid. His partner looks at him and says, you got a lot to learn to, do what it really, to, to, to really do what makes this job look good. They, see, we've got it mistaken. We've got it twisted. We think that as long as we look good doing the job, we're effective at the job. We got it twisted. We, th we think that as long as we, we carry ourselves charismatically and say the right things, that we're doing the right things. What about your work? They think that just because you make it look easy and you make it look good that anybody can do it. But being the boss, being the man, being the woman, it means you got to suffer a little bit. It means you got to take the naysayers. And as we like to call them today, the trolls. It means you got to listen to or hear the trolls out. It means you got to take the blows that the trolls give you. My boy Will won a Grammy or an Oscar the other day, and he didn't handle the suffering part very well. Because you got to listen to the trolls and you got to hear what they got to say, the bullies and the people that pick on you and the people that, that throw darts and jabs at you. And then you got to listen to those people that complain and whine about you and the people that don't appreciate what you do. They don't appreciate that you got up at five o'clock in the morning so that you could be at the meeting at seven and then that you had to sacrifice time with your family. You weren't able to drop them off. You missed the bus. You missed the, the baseball game. You missed the basketball game. They, they don't appreciate that. And then they come around and turn around and talk about you behind your back. It's, you have to be willing to suffer in order to be able to build this kingdom. If you want to be able to be, to be the boss and you understand the cost is that you got to be willing to suffer. When your family turns your backs on you and your friends turn away and all and everybody want to walk and you have to walk the path alone. Suffering. But that's the price you pay if you want to be the boss. Jesus said, and I love it, he says, can you drink the cup that I, I'm going to drink out of? I mean, I'm just saying, can you drink the cup that I, I drink of? You want to ask me to, have, to sit next to me, but can you handle the sacrifice and the suffering that I have to handle, endure? Can you cope with that? We'll do it, Lord. Okay, well, then you will. But I cannot tell you that you can have that position. In other words, what Jesus was saying is if you want that, there's a cost for it. There's a price for it. And as you grow spiritually, understand every level that you have to achieve and that you go to achieve, there's a cost to get there. There's a sacrifice for it. There's a, there's a suffering for it. You're going to have to pay for it through your service. You're going to have to pay for it through your sacrificing. You're going to have to pay for it through your suffering. Can you drink the cup that Jesus drank out of to get where he's going to go? To get where he wants to take you, can you afford, can you drink the cup of suffering? Jesus says, all right, well, look, I'm, they're going to hang me up on a cross. Can you handle that? Well, we can, we can do it, Jesus. We can do it. We can do it. Okay, well, they're going to whip me all night long. Can you handle that? Oh, yeah, we can, we can, we can do that, Jesus. We got, we got, well, I'm, I'm going to suffer for a while. They're going to put a crown of thorns on my head. You think you can handle that? 
Ah, yeah, we got this, Jesus. We got what? Then you will. You, hey, by the way, they're gonna they're gonna put me in a tomb for three three nights. You think you can you think you can handle that? Yeah, we 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 can handle all. Okay, well, okay, well, sure, all right, fine. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, you know, also after that, then I gotta go down and descend into hell to free some captives. Are you, you sure you want to do that part too? Oh, we gotta see. We 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 tell Jesus that we can handle all of these things, but he knows the truth. But understand that everything that he was telling them was everything that he was suggesting in this suggesting the statement of can you drink the cup that I was that I'm gonna drink of was the cost of your salvation, the cost of your liberty, the cost of your freedom, the cost of your deliverance. Can you drink the cup of his suffering to get to the next place in his and in, in where he wants to take you? Sacrificing and suffering as he suffered to get to the next place in your spiritual growth. There's a cost to being the boss. There's a cost to growing spiritually. There's a cost to elevating to, and, and growing closer to Jesus Christ and closer to God. There's a price to pay in order to be the boss. Somebody say, there's a cost to being the boss. And even as he served and even as he suffered, he did it so that you and I can be free. He did it so that you and I can have liberty. He did it, did it so that you and I could have joy in him. He did it so that you and I could love and experience and he did it, and I love this passage. He says, he says, you are a city on a hill. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. You are the light of the world. He did it, all, it, did it so that you and I could be that light. So as we begin to move into these different phases post-COVID, as we begin to move into this new world, I want you to remember, you are a city on a hill and a light of the world. You are salt of the earth, and you have a job to do. You know what the salt, the salt is for? If it loses its saltiness, it's good for nothing, right? Salt is a preservative. In other words, you salt the things in order to keep them fresh. Light illuminates the darkness. If this is a dark world, light is the only thing leading people. You are the light of the world, and you lead people in a dark world to Christ. And if you are not lit, people cannot see. If you are not, and, and understand, people, people, we don't, we miss this. Salt is a preservative. In other words, the only thing keeping this situation, this chaotic situation that we got going on in this world, the only thing keeping it pres here is you. You miss that. You are the salt of the world. And without salt, without the preservative, what's what happens to it? It rots. The only thing keeping this here is you. The Holy Spirit within you, salts, is, is, is preserving this whole thing. And this world needs you. Salt and light. And if we are not doing what we're supposed to do, we fall off and we've given up on the world. So I challenge you as I go to my seat, be that salt. Be that light. Preserve and lead people to Christ. Lead people to Jesus. Because understand... That is the cost of the authority that you have in him. That is the price that you pay to be connected to him. He warned you. He told you. He said, you're going to have to suffer for my name. You're going to have to pay the price for my name. You want to bear my brand? You're going to have to pay for it. There's a cost to being the boss. I want to thank you all for helping us celebrate Men's Day 2020, and it's so wonderful to see so many visitors here that uh, we haven't seen in a long time, <laughs> and we thank God for them being here today. 
I want to thank our program participants. Uh, Deacon George Curry, oh, there he is, who is our worship leader. Brother Eric Curry, who did our announcements and welcome visitors. Sean Singleton II for his introduction of the speaker. Of course, uh, Reverend Stevenson. And I have, uh, we're going to take a picture of all the men uh, immediately following service. Uh, the photographer is here, so. so we can do that. Now we'll have Dr. Singleton to come up and make his comments. Good morning, church. Come on, good morning, church. We just had worship now, come on. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name, amen. We certainly wanna bless God for the word of God that came forth upon the man of God here today. God bless you, my brother, heaven smile upon you. Come on, can we bless our preacher? Hallelujah. Amen, it's always good when you see young brothers and uh, going forth and picking up the mantle and, and bringing the word of God. Amen. It lets us know that God's word is in good hands in the years to come. And so we, we certainly want to bless you in the work that you're doing over with your father at Macedonia New Life. And we just pray that God will continue to speak through you and to you. Amen. So that you can continue to be a light up on the hill. Amen. And we certainly also, again, we want to bless our male chorus. Uh, two Sundays in a row, they blessed us. Can we bless the brothers, amen, for our male chorus? Amen. And our musicians, God be praised, amen, for ushering us into the presence of the Lord. And we're certainly um, uh, so appreciative of that. We certainly want to uh, thank Deacon Brown and uh, Deacon Curry. Um, we had a vacancy and leading our layman's league. And they were like rams in the bush to pick up the mantle and to make sure that we will be able to go forth and have a great uh, men's day. We haven't had one in person uh, since 2019, amen? The last two years, we, we haven't had, 2020, we didn't have one at all. Last year, it was virtual, and so we were determined that we were going to have a great men's day on this Sunday, and we want to thank you guys, amen, for doing everything behind the scene and making sure that it went off uh, and that it was a blessing to the body of Christ, amen? Amen. But we also want to make sure that we bless all of the men of Martin Street Baptist Church. Again, uh, men, go ahead and stand up one more time and turn around. Somebody may not have seen you. They've seen you back. Go ahead and turn around so everybody can see you. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless his name. To God be the glory. Amen. We said we, said we endeavored to have brothers in bows. Amen. And, and we did a great job. We certainly, and, and one of the reasons we were pushing so hard, amen, um, we asked the men to make sure that they showed up, wear their bow ties, pay their assessments, because we know the women, they don't like to be outdone. Nothing in church do the women want to be outdone. And so we wanted to set the bar real high for Women's Day. Um, so, so brothers, we've set the bar real high, so we're going to see if these ladies can do their Jackie John or Kirsty and jump over. But we, we made sure to set it as high as we could uh, for Men's Day. Amen, ladies? All right, so the challenge, they're picking up the challenge. But again, we want to thank God for everything. Men walking humbly with God, as our preacher told us, that it costs to be the boss. But it doesn't cost what we always think. He reminded us that the cost to really be the boss starts with sacrificing. It costs being a person of service. And lastly, you have to be willing to suffer as Jesus has suffered if you want to drink from the cup that Jesus drank from. And so again, we are reminded that Jesus said in this world, all of us are going to have to go through tribulations. But he said that we can still be of good cheer because he has already overcome the world. Amen? Amen. And so we're not going to neglect the fact that this is a worship service. We want to make sure that we open up the doors of the church. If there's anybody in here that through this worship experience, you've decided that you want to give your life to Christ, we want to invite you now to come so that you too might leave here today with the blessed assurance of knowing that you are saved. Uh, we also want to open the doors of the church for anyone who may uh, need to come back home. Uh, someone that may have found themselves in this far off country, 
God is standing and waiting with open arms to welcome you back in. And he simply says, whosoever will, just let them come. Lastly, there may be someone in here today that would like to be a member of this great church. If you would like to be a member of Martin Street Baptist Church, we certainly invite you to come now so that we might connect with you so that you too might be in the fellowship of this great church. Is there one here today that seeks to be saved, that seeks restoration, that seeks church membership? Is there one? Hallelujah. Amen. Well, God be praised. Amen. Let us put our hands together one more time. Amen. And so here's what's about to happen. We're going to try to do this um, expediently, but we're going to also try to do it decent and in order. So we're going to invite our preacher to come back and lead us in our benediction. Immediately after the benediction, what we're going to ask everyone to do, we're going to ask the, the females. If y'all would just stay seated, just stay seated for just a moment. If you got to leave, we understand. But then we're going to ask all the males if you would just get up and come to the, to the podium. And we're going to try to take the picture. But see, we figure if the ladies are out here, y'all give us something to smile at. <laughs> Amen? So y'all stay seated, ladies, and we're going to ask all the males to get up and come as quickly and expediently as possible after the benediction. Uh, we're going to move the mics and everything, and we're going to get set up so that we can take a, a photograph. Uh, Brother Tony is outside the door. Can somebody go ahead and notify him that we're going to be ready in just a second so he can come on and get ready? Come on, my brother. Come and lead us in our benediction. Amen. God be praised. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you as you go and as you come. I pray that he touches, that, you, that he blesses everything that you touch. I pray that he increases everything that you touch. I pray that he provides you with good health, good strength, and I pray that he keeps you in your going and in your coming. Until we meet again, let every heart say together, amen, amen, amen. 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 All right, brothers, come on now.